This is the vast, open, and sprawling west of America, patiently shaped and molded over the ages by the mighty hand of nature. It has looked like this for thousands of years. centuries before the white man set foot on the craggy rocks of New England, these vast and remote reaches were peopled by the red men. The great Indian nations who met the challenge of this environment and sometimes lived at peace with nature. But like all men, they feared nature, declaring natural calamities to be the works of their gods, especially thunder and lightning. For this in the eyes of the red man, was the work of his great god, Thunderbird. When Thunderbird flashed his eyes, lightning was observed far and wide. And when he flapped his wings, thunder rolled across these limitless reaches. But generally, Thunderbird was a force for good over evil. The dream, of course, was always there, even then. To fly like the Thunderbird, to command the thunder and lightning. The dream became reality. These are the Thunderbirds of today. 95 officers and enlisted men of the United States Air Force. Proud representatives of the Thunderbird legend and dedicated examples of the Air Force Thunderbird tradition. Moving through the skies in a fantastic aerial ballet, flashing man-made visual lightning with quick and easy grace, then calling forth the thunder. The Thunderbirds have moved spectators to describe this kind of aerial display as an art form. For more than two decades, each succeeding team, each succeeding generation of Thunderbirds, has dramatically evidenced the deep pride and dedication necessary to perform the mission assigned to this team of American airmen. To plan and present precision aerial maneuvers, exhibit air power and the flexibilities of modern tactical aircraft, as well as the high degree of professional skills required to operate high-performance aircraft. Each year, hundreds of Africans from throughout the United States Air Force vie for openings in this elite squadron. The Thunderbird selection process is painstaking and thorough. We take a lot of time and a great deal of concentration and effort in our selection process. It takes about three months to narrow the field down from about 100 pilots who want to be on the team every year. We take a lot of time. We read their records and applications and get recommendations from various people who've worked with the applicants. We narrow them down to about 20 that we feel we can work with. And then after we travel with all of them, we sit down and have a powwow among ourselves and come up with five finalists. These finalists must be able to meet the public well. They must be good at public relations. And, of course, they must be outstanding pilots. But flying the thunder and lightning is only a part of the Thunderbird legendary tradition. Here is the backbone of the Thunderbirds, the often unheralded maintenance and support personnel, the best in the United States Air Force. 
These are the dedicated professionals who have perpetuated one of the proudest Thunderbird records. Not one flight demonstration has ever been canceled because of maintenance difficulties. That's right. And we trust them for many reasons. One, they're the finest in the Air Force. Two, they have a dedicated, sincere interest in our mission. They can watch the aircraft take off, fly, and do its whole job and land right in front of them. It never leaves their sight. And three, they fly in the airplane. And all three of these motivating factors are very important to their job performance. This maintenance team is composed of all volunteers, like the pilots, and have competed with as many as 100 applicants for the right to wear the distinctive Thunderbird insignia. This experience in excellence, which is the Thunderbirds, is retained by each man for the rest of his life. Based deep in the heart of America's great Southwest, in the desert home of the legendary Thunderbird, the squadron flies to the corners of the Earth, traveling as much as 100,000 miles in a single year. During a normal show season, the Thunderbirds perform more than 100 flight demonstrations before millions of spectators. Since first formed, the team has performed in all 50 states and 45 countries and has been seen by more than 100 million people. And for those who are unable to attend the flight demonstrations, the Thunderbirds invariably go to where such individuals are located. This includes hospitals, orphanages, and school classrooms. The team particularly enjoys this close association with young America, for the future history of our nation will be written by these youthful citizens. But the biggest thrill of all for both the public and the Thunderbird Squadron is the flight demonstration. The show itself runs 30 minutes and features five Thunderbird pilots. Four are in the diamond formation and take off together. The solo pilot plans his maneuvers to occur with split-second precision between those of the diamond. Here's how the solo Thunderbird describes his job. I demonstrate the tight, high G turn radius of the airplane. I demonstrate the maximum rate rolls, low altitude maneuvers, upside down flying, right side up flying, all in a high G environment. My job is to demonstrate the maximum performance capabilities of the airplane. Whereas the diamond's job is to demonstrate the beauty of precision formation aerobatics. And this beauty of precision formation is largely the responsibility of the Thunderbird commander leader. The responsibility of consistency and the responsibility of maneuver symmetry is all blended together. You don't say, I'm responsible for these things. You just recognize that when you get in the airplane. But we give them our very best every show, and that's responsibility. The Thunderbird slot pilot, who flies directly behind the leader and between the two wingmen, has some special responsibilities. Watching the wingman doesn't help me to perform the maneuvers properly, but 
Initially, I must admit that their aircraft in my periphery did draw my attention, and I would look at them periodically, either to watch what they were doing to make sure that I didn't hit them, or to look at them to check another reference as far as my positioning. As time moved on and I became more accustomed to the big picture, and I also gained this confidence in the fellows on either side of me, my attention moved from them more and more to the leader. I trust them to be there, and so therefore I don't have to devote any attention to them. Exploiting the maximum performance of the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom aircraft, the Thunderbird solo pilot roars in at minimum altitude for aileron rolls. One of the most spectacular and beautiful maneuvers executed by the diamond formation is a roll back to arrowhead. In this maneuver, the two wingmen roll back from the diamond to fly wing position on the slot pilot. described by the Thunderbird left wing pilot. The boss will call, let's go roll back. Ready? Now. He's establishing that so we're wings level inverted when we reach show center. The other wingman and I start up and at our proper height above the flight I call and roll, at which time we both attempt to roll at the same rate and we form back on the slot pilot. We're trying to be synchronized, trying to match one another. And the timing is something you can't really be mechanical about. We've got to continually try to establish a set rate. And we're working on a rate of separation as we come out of the roll. With landing gear, flaps, and speed brakes extended, the Thunderbird solo pilot graphically shows his skillful handling of his 20-ton aircraft. With wings completely overlapped and separated vertically by less than three feet, moving as if guided by one hand, the Thunderbirds approach for the spectacular bomb burst. the centuries-old legend of Thunderbird is as lively as it ever was. This rich legacy and tradition are being nurtured and carried on by today's United States Air Force Thunderbirds. This legacy is in good hands. For once a Thunderbird, always a Thunderbird. The United States Air Force Thunderbirds, professionalism and pride of performance, Ambassadors in blue, demonstrating American strength and goodwill throughout the world. <laughs> <laughs>